Hi students, welcome to Smart Walkers. In this video, we will see the chapter uh, Plant Respiration, Part 1. What is respiration or what is cellular respiration? It takes place within the cell. It is the mechanism of breakdown of food materials through oxidation and the release of energy and trapping of this energy in the form of ATP. So see, it is the breakdown of food materials through oxidation release of energy trapping of this energy in the form of ATP that is cellular respiration the substances which are oxidized during respiration are known as respiratory substrates this respiratory substrates includes carbohydrates protein fat and organic acids among these carbohydrate is the most common respiratory substrate in all organisms in respiration, energy is released in a series of slow stepwise reactions so that the released energy can be coupled to ATP synthesis. And this ATP uh, can be broken down whenever or wherever energy needs to be utilized. So that is why ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is considered as energy currency of the cell. Then the carbon skeleton produced during respiration act as a precursor for the synthesis of various other biomolecules. Plants have no specialized organs for respiration, even though plants require oxygen for respiration to occur. The reasons why plants have no specialized organs for gaseous exchange. The first one. Each plant part take care of its own gaseous exchange needs. Plants have three fundamental organs. The three organs are root, stem and leaf. Then, second one. Plants do not present great demands for gaseous exchange. Compared to animals, the demand is less in case of plants. This is the second reason. Third reason. Uh, in plants, in plant body, uh, this gaseous diffusion need not be taken for longer distance because each plant part take care of its own gaseous exchange needs one of the reason another reason in plants the living cells are located close to the surface because of these reasons plants do not have a specialized uh, respiratory system in plants stomata and lindy cells these are the openings stomata present mainly in the epidermis of leaves, lenticel, lens-shaped opening found in bark. These two openings helps in gaseous exchange. See here, during the process of respiration, oxygen is utilized, then carbon dioxide, water and energy are released as the products. Both aerobic and anaerobic organisms retain the enzymatic machinery to partially oxidize uh, carbohydrate without the help of oxygen. This breakdown, that is partial hydrogen or partial breakdown or partial oxidation of glucose in the absence of oxygen into pyruvic acid is known as glycolysis. Glycolysis is also known as EMP pathway, named after the discoverers Emden, Mayerhoff, and Parnas. Then this glycolysis takes place in cytosol, within the cytoplasm, uh, specifically in cytosol. Then, glycolysis um, takes place in both aerobic and anaerobic organisms. Even though it is present in both aerobic and anaerobic organisms, it is the only process of respiration in anaerobic organisms. In aerobic organisms, other process of respiration are also there. But in anaerobic organisms, this is the only process in respiration. Then, it involves the partial uh, breakdown or partial oxidation of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid. That is, a hexose, glucose, a hexose, six carbon sugar, is uh, converted into pyruvic acid, three carbon sugar. Hexose is converted into triose. Then, in plants, in plants, um, the sucrose, sucrose is a disaccharide 
is first converted into or hydrolyzed into glucose and fructose by the enzyme in vertase. And both glucose and fructose readily enter the glycolytic pathway. In the glycolytic pathway, glucose is first converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Better to say, glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6 phosphate. Here, the phosphate donor is ATP. As a result, ATP becomes ADP. And the enzyme involved in this step is uh, mentioned in NCRT that is hexokinase. Then the next step, glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized into fructose 6-phosphate. The next step, fructose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate or bisphosphate. In this step also, ATP utilization takes place. ATP becomes ADP. So see here, glucose to fructose 1,6-phosphate. All are 6 carbon compounds. Glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 1,6-phosphate. All are 6 carbon compounds. In the next step, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate splits into 2, 3 carbon compounds. Dihydroxyacetonephosphate and 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. These two are interconvertible forms. Then, the next step, 3-PGAL, 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde, is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. That means an aldehyde is converted into an acid. Oxidation occurs during this step. The removed hydrogen is accepted by NAD+. As a result, it becomes NADH+, H+. The next step, 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid becomes 3-phosphoglyceric acid. That is, phosphate group is removed from the first carbon atom, which is accepted by ADP. As a result, ATP synthesis occurs. So the mechanism of ATP synthesis here in this step is known as substrate level phosphorylation. That is, during the conversion of a substrate into product, the released energy is directly uh, utilized for ATP synthesis. The next step, 3-phosphoglyceric acid is converted into 2-phosphoglyceric acid. Phosphate group is shifted from third carbon atom to second carbon atom. The next step, 2-phosphoglyceric acid is converted into PEP. That is phosphoenol pyruvic acid. Uh, during this step, dehydration occurs. And in the next step, PEP is converted into pyruvic acid, the end product of glycolysis. During this conversion, the released energy is accepted by ADP and it becomes ATP. So this step also involves substrate level phosphorylation. And since here two molecules uh, of three carbon compounds are there, at last we will get two molecules of pyruvic acid. So one molecule of glucose is oxidized into two molecules of pyruvic acid. So there is a question in NCRT in italics. How many ATP are directly synthesized in glycolysis? Here, the direct synthesis of ATP in glycolysis is known as substrate level phosphorylation. That is the mechanism. Through substrate level phosphorylation, uh, total 4 ATP are synthesized. The two steps are conversion of 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid into 3-PG, 3-phosphoglyceric acid and Phosphoenol pyruvic acid into pyruvic acid. Since these two steps occur two times, 2 into 2, total 4 ATP are synthesized. And the net gain is only 2 ATP because 2 ATP are utilized during the initial stages, that is, during the conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and during the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. So, Total production for ATP, but the net gain is only 2 ATP. And these ATP are synthesized through substrate level phosphorylation, direct phosphorylation. The metabolic fate of pyruvic acid actually depends on the cellular need. Three major pathways are there. It can be either converted into alcohol or lactic acid or carbon dioxide and water. 
if alcohol is the final product then we call it as alcoholic fermentation and if lactic acid is the final product then we call it as lactic acid fermentation and if carbon dioxide and water are produced then it is nothing but aerobic respiration so um, after the formation of pyruvic acid based on the cellular name it can be either aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration fermentation is nothing but anaerobic respiration that is incomplete oxidation of respiratory substrate in the absence of oxygen based on the type of end product it can be of two types either alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation in alcoholic fermentation the first step is common that is glycolysis where glucose is converted into pyruvic acid after the formation of pyruvic acid pyruvic acid is first converted into acetaldehyde decarboxylation occurs during this conversion the enzyme involved in this step is pyruvate decarboxylase and the next step acetaldehyde is converted into ethanol during this step reduction occurs the reducing agent here is NADH plus H plus which is produced during glycolysis so the NADH plus H plus produced during glycolysis is utilized in this step it will be converted into NAD plus the enzyme involved in this step is alcohol dehydrogenase uh, the next about lactic acid fermentation here the first step is glycolysis glucose is converted into pyruvic acid and the next step pyruvic acid is reduced into lactic acid the reducing agent here is NADH plus H plus which will be converted into NAD plus and this step is catalyzed by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase LDH so see here in both the cases in both alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation NADH plus H plus is the reducing agent then in alcoholic fermentation acetaldehyde is reduced into ethanol in lactic acid fermentation pyruvic acid is reduced into lactic acids in fermentation that is both alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation not much energy is released that is in both the cases less than 7% of the energy in glucose is released that also not completely trapped as ATP so it is energetically less efficient than aerobic respiration then uh, both the process are hazardous because either acid or alcohol are produced that's why both the process are hazardous in case of yeast yeast poison themselves to death when the alcohol concentration reaches 13 percent if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe my channel and if you have any doubt regarding this topic uh, please comment below thanks for watching